Welcome to the LED buying guide from Growlight Central. If you're in the market for an LED grow light, I'm sure you've noticed that there are way too many options out there, and most of them are pretty terrible. Knowing which manufacturers to avoid and which lights are worth getting is not easy. And with this guide, we hope to make things a little more clear and make that decision a lot easier for you. Let's get started. In order to help you decide on the right grow light for you, we're going to look at a number of features that differ among the various grow lights and the various grow light brands. These features are price, power, spectrum, coverage, PAR, and the warranty. If you don't know what all of those mean, specifically PAR, don't worry, we'll get into that. Let's begin with price. Now I'm sure you've noticed that LED grow lights are all quite expensive, and because of that, price is not really the best differentiating feature. But one of the most common questions we get is, I have so and so much money to spend, which grow light should I get? Because of that, we decided to start with price here and look at a couple of different price levels and make some recommendations for you. So we're going to start with grow lights under $200, and the best values in this price range are the Lighthouse Hydro 90 Watt UFO, and it has an actual wattage of 74 watts. If you're not sure why there's two wattages here, don't worry, we'll get into that in the next section on power. It offers a six-band spectrum, that means it has six different colored LEDs that can be used for all stages of plant growth, and it gives you 188 micromoles. Now that is the PAR value, and again, we'll get into that later, but... Briefly, basically what that measures is the amount of usable light for the plants. So the amount of light in the correct color spectrum so that plants can use it for photosynthesis. And this light costs $197.95. The other light we recommend under $200 is also a UFO. It's by Advanced Spectrum. Now you'll see this company pop up on a few of these recommendations. And you might notice that they are a lot cheaper than other lights. They come from China, and while we don't usually carry Chinese lights, we do carry theirs. The, the quality is a little bit lower than the top-of-the-line brands, but they are still excellent, and the company stands behind them. If there is ever a problem, they will replace it. And for that reason, we work with them. And they make good lights. And in this case, the 90-watt UFO costs $169.97. It has a four-band spectrum instead of the six-band spectrum from above, and only draws 54 watts of power. The best values under $500 are the Solar Flare 220 by California Lightworks. And you can see it draws 165 watts and it has a 5 band spectrum. And the PAR value is 745 micromoles. It costs $439. And again, we have another advanced spectrum. This is the Max 360. It draws 216 watts and has that same 6 band spectrum as the other advanced spectrum. And you may have noticed that there is no micromole figure here for the advanced spectrum lights. That's because advanced spectrum does not give you a PAR value with their lights. So there's a reason for that. We'll get into that later in the section on PAR. And anyways, this light is more expensive than the solar flare. It's 497, but it's also a lot more powerful. Best values under 1,000 are the Kind K3L600 for $895. It draws 320 watts, and it has a 12-band spectrum. All the Kind lights have this 12-band spectrum. It's a pretty amazing spectrum, actually. And again, advanced spectrum comes in as another recommendation. In this case, it's the Max 900. This is a really powerful light. You can see it even draws 540 watts. And it's actually comparable to the two lights in the next section. Uh, but we put it here because it actually costs a lot less than those two. It only costs $997. Speaking of those two lights, here we go. Best values over 1,000. It's the Kind LED K5 XL1000. You'll see us recommend this one a lot. It's our best selling light, and there's a reason for that. It's pretty amazing. It draws 650 watts, has that same 12-band spectrum, and costs $16.95. And the, the California Lightworks Solar Storm 880 is our other recommendation. Also 650 watts, uh, California Lightworks 6-band spectrum. Again, they give the PAR value, so 2,439 micromoles. It costs 1,799. And let's go back a slide and look again at this Advanced Spectrum Max 900. Again, it costs less than 1,000 but in output it is comparable to these two more expensive lights. So it's a great alternative if you're trying to save some money. Let's look at power next. And as I mentioned before, LED lights usually have two power values. At least on our site, you will always see two. And what this is, first one, the higher one, is the rated wattage. And a lot of manufacturers like to list this wattage, but it's a bit misleading. Where that wattage comes from is this. LED chips have a certain wattage. For example, 3 watts is the most common one. But if you actually run them at 3 watts, they will burn out quickly. So you can't run them at full power. You run them at about 60% power, so maybe 2 watts. And so that's why lights have the listed wattage. Say it's a 600 watt light, but actually it will draw less than that, 300 to 400 watts. So be careful with that. Um, it can be a bit misleading, but like I said, on our site we always list them both. 
So how much power do you need? Well, basically you want about 25 watts per square foot of grow space, and that's the actual wattage, not the listed wattage. So we'll give you an example here. So you have four plants, and each plant takes up four square feet, or area of two by two feet. This would require a minimum of 400 watts, right? You have 16 square feet times 25 watts per square foot, which is 400 watts. That said, if you can afford it, go bigger. Uh, get 600 watts for this example, because it's always better to have more power. Right? Your plants will thank you. And remember, these are actual watts, not the listed watts. Here's a little table that might help you out. I'm not going to go through it now because it'll take too much time. If you click on the link in the description below, you can go to the written version of this video and the table will be there too, or you can just pause the video and look at it. But basically this gives you a couple different coverage areas. So if you're trying to cover an area of four by four feet, for example, there are several options you could go with. You could go with four units of 180 to 240 watts, or two of 300 to 400 watts, or one 600 plus watt unit. And generally it's better to go with several smaller units as opposed to one larger one, because that way you can have light from several different directions at once, which is, is always better. Let's move on to the spectrum. We recommend getting full spectrum lights for everything. Um, unless you're specifically getting a light to only veg or to only clone, you would get a, a light that's heavy in the blue spectrum. Or if you're getting a, a fixture as supplemental lighting, then you could also get a specific color spectrum. When it comes to full spectrum lights, there are two options. Lights that use white LEDs and lights that use multiple colored LEDs. Full spectrum white LED lights closely approximate natural sunlight. Uh, they give you a very similar spectrum to sunlight, and they're basically a combination of MH light and HPS light. So in theory, these are great, and they have a very high output. If you're looking for white LED lights, uh, the best option is Promax Grow. Opponents of white LED lights say that they include too much light in the green and yellow spectrum, right? So they approximate the natural sunlight. The natural sunlight has a lot of yellow and green light. That's what we see. Like, that's the light that we see. That's why the sun seems bright. That's why white LED lights seem really bright, because it's a lot of light in our visible range. But that light is not really usable by plants. They don't need it for photosynthesis. They need light that's heavier in the red and the blue spectrums. So a lot of that light just goes to waste, right? And that makes white LEDs less efficient. And again, now these are theories. Um, people have been arguing about this for years, which is better, and they will continue to argue. No one has really come to a definite conclusion yet. If you want to read up on it, there's a lot of reading to do on the internet on this. Personally, uh, we recommend multi-band fixtures. Personally, I come from a science background, so I believe the science that photosynthesis requires certain bands, so it's best to give the, the plants only those bands. But additionally, all the lights we sell on our site anyways include white light. Remember the kind with its 12-band spectrum? At least one, maybe two of those bands are white light. So they have that white light along with the other light already. Because of their 12-band spectrum, we feel that Kind LED are the best option when it comes to multi-band full-spectrum LED lights, and so do most of our customers. Like I said, they are the most popular lights we sell. Let's look at coverage area now. This is probably pretty obvious, but stated anyways, the coverage area increases as the distance from the plants increases. So if you move the light further away from the plants, obviously it's more spread out and will cover more plants. But because of that, when you move the light away, the intensity of that light will decrease, so the PAR value will decrease. Because you can alter the coverage area by moving the light back, manufacturers will often list coverage areas that are probably a bit bigger than what they should be listing. So despite all the claims you read, even the most powerful LED lights will give you a maximum coverage area of 4x4 four four feet, maybe up to 5x5 five five feet. And this is for flowering. Obviously, if you're vegging, you can get a larger coverage area because you can move them back more. You don't need as much intensity. But for flowering, 4x4, four four, maybe 5x5 five five is the max you will get, despite any claims. So the lights with the maximum coverage uh, of about 4x4 four four feet to maybe 5x5 five five are these four lights, the Kind K5 XL1000, the SolarStorm 880 by California Lightworks, the Advanced Spectra Max 900, and the Ion 8 from Lighthouse Hydro. Let's look at PAR next. Remember the PAR value given in micromoles measures the amount of usable light. In other words, the amount of light that the plants actually use for photosynthesis. As I mentioned in the previous section, as you move the light away from the plants, the PAR value will decrease, of course, and vice versa. Because of this, again, PAR values given by manufacturers can be a bit misleading. You know, you can move the light closer and get a much stronger PAR value. Also, they usually measure the PAR directly beneath the light, which is great if you're only growing one small plant that's right in the middle, but generally you're trying to cover a larger area, like I said before, maybe four by four feet, right? So you want a good PAR value throughout that coverage area, not just right in the center. 
because of this, some manufacturers choose not to list PAR values for their lights because th they can be misleading. Here are the lights with the best PAR values throughout the whole coverage area. Again, the Kine K5XL1000, the SolarStorm 880, and the Lighthouse Hydro Ion 8. Seeing a lot of the same lights over and over again, that's because they are the best lights. Finally, the warranty. Uh, if you're shopping on our site, there's not something you have to worry about. Every brand we sell has at least a three-year warranty. If you're shopping elsewhere, you want to make sure that you're getting at least a three-year warranty, because if the manufacturers aren't willing to stand behind their lights, th that should tell you something. Also be cautious of manufacturers that haven't been around too long. Um, this doesn't necessarily mean they're bad, but so many new manufacturers are constantly springing up and a lot of them end up going bankrupt within a year or two. And if they're no longer around, they obviously can't honor their warranty. So even if they make good lights, if they're not there to honor the warranty, it could be a problem. So I'm not saying don't buy from new manufacturers, but all else being equal, go with manufacturers that have been around for a while, that are a bit more established. Okay, that does it. I hope this helped you out a little, maybe made the uh, buying decision a bit easier for you, gave you an idea what you need. As I said before, if you click on the link below in the description, you can go to the written page, and that page will also include live links to the recommendations, so you don't have to search for them. And also that page will be updated more often than this video, so probably already by the time you're watching this video there will be new lights that we recommend uh, so it's definitely worth checking out and finally our website as a whole is growlightcentral.com you can go there if you want to buy some of these lights you've seen or uh, shop around just browse feel free thank you for watching and happy shopping